So that stalled Russian military convoy, it's still sitting there, and frankly, it's a sitting duck for drone attacks. But do the Ukrainians have access to those Turkish drones with armor-piercing capability? Joining me now is retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis. Colonel, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, Colonel, on Sunday, we got this extraordinary footage of a, a strike, a Ukrainian strike against uh, Russian positions. It was a Rus Russian missile unit uh, with all kinds of secondary and tertiary explosions. We're looking at it on the left hand of your screen now. This was presumably done by, with the use of one of these Turkish drones. Uh, do they have enough of those Turkish drones to, to attack this convoy, this 40-mile-long convoy that's stuck? No, they don't. And if they did, it would have, that would have just been the first of many such strikes that followed after it. But uh, what, what's also true is that this long convoy uh, is a mixture of combat forces, tanks, infantry vehicles, uh, logistics, and air, anti-aircraft capabilities, uh, air defense capabilities. And that's uh, probably why you don't see any more of these, because they're getting shot down. W one of the things that uh, the Russians are doing good is that they their anti-aircraft capability has been uh, about as good as advertised. That's why you don't see uh, MiGs flying for the Ukrainian armed forces. If they did, that convoy would be burning for 40 miles because it's just absolutely sitting duck. But Ukraine forces don't have the capacity to launch an air assault, right. and that's one of the reasons it's sitting there. Now, I don't think that they're that they're stalled. I think that they're actually sitting there poised in attack positions, waiting for some of these forces to finish their actions in the south and in the east, and then they may join in a pincer movement on Kiev. That's the real danger. But their their soldiers are, are in there using those uh, those vehicles as as a sleeping place. I mean, they've they've got the. Presumably, they got the motors running. I mean, eventually, in order to keep the heat in going and all of the other equipment they have, eventually they're going to run out of gas, no? Yeah, well, certainly, but that's why I say they actually have the logistics in the convoy with oh, them. Oh, I so see. That's they, have, they have the tankers, the and oil I, I've tankers. I've actually there. experienced that. Yeah, they do. They do. And, and I've actually experienced that both in combat and in training in Europe where you've been sitting for a long time waiting for the order to go and you have to have constant resupply of, of fuel. And that was their big mistake in the beginning, and it looks like that they have corrected that. Well, if they've got the anti-aircraft capability in within this convoy, how, how was it that we saw that strike over the weekend of, of that Russian missile unit? That was, that was a very uh, impressive yeah. strike. Well, it is, and, and I, I frankly expected to see a lot more of that because of the uh, Armenian-Azerbaijan war in 2020, where they made extensive uses of that. I expected that to be a feature of this war, which so far has been kind of absent. But this this is war, and there's no foolproof anything. So some things are going to get through, but the fact that you haven't seen a lot more of those really shows you that the, their capabilities are limited, unfortunately. What other means might we have to disperse that convoy before it strikes uh, whatever city it's, it's, it's uh, focusing in on? I imagine it's Kiev. Boy, I, I tell you, there's just not anything else. I mean, if, if the Ukraine had the ability to maneuver forces to get onto the Russian convoy, they would have already done it because that's the, if you don't have the air power, that's the next likely way. But the Ukrainian armed forces is, is very road bound or and actually it's more like foot bound because they were good at the trench warfare for the last eight years, but they just don't have the capacity or the, or the training or the equipment to really do good maneuver warfare. And that's really an Achilles heel right now because those those trucks are up there sitting ducks. You, your, your comment at the beginning was right except that the Ukraines don't have the capacity to hit those ducks. What about missile strikes against the convoy? If they had it, then that would be, then of course, can't we be, get it, it into there, them? But, I mean, I understand that, that well, it, it's difficult through the through the the uh, water route because uh, it looks like the Russians pretty much have Odessa. So that's that route is cut off from from Turkish input. But you can still bring stuff in from Poland, right? Well, I mean, it's theoretically possible, but the Russians are trying to interdict that. But, yeah. but I'll just tell you, other than like Stinger missiles, something that an individual can fire, uh, those kinds of facilities of like launching uh, directed missiles and that are pinpoint accuracy, those things take lots of training and setup. You just can't throw those in there. It's just you can't do it on the fly, I'm afraid. And, and that's we well, just are where we are. And I know, man, everybody yeah. would like to help Ukraine fight here. But the fact is that the military balance is just heavily weighted in Russia's favor. So, right now. so a very sober analysis. This has got to be the final question. How much longer do you think the Ukrainians have, particularly those in the major cities?
before the Russian units go in and attack? You know, we've already had Kyrgyzstan fall in just the last 12 hours uh, in the south, and then Mariupol is probably the next to fall. And then after that, they can move their forces up to Kharkov. And then Donbass, the only major thing left is, is Kiev after that. So it's just hard for me to see how they can hang on much longer. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I say that the U.S., we need to make sure that this stays contained where it's at and it doesn't spill over. As bad as this is, we've got to make sure it doesn't get worse. Colonel Daniel Davis, good to see you, Colonel. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Always my pleasure for being here. Thank you.